to answer your question on the selling side of what's going on in the market right now, let me start with a warning. And go slow. We need to go slow on okay. this. There's we'll a lot down. of information. We'll slow down a little bit here. Let me start with a warning. My warning is this. Many, many sellers right now are being lazy. And again, I'm not saying they're lazy human beings and less valuable people. I'm saying they are believing a lie that the market is so hot right now that all you have to do is put a sign in the yard and your home will sell for top dollar and everything will go smoothly. I said that the way I said it on purpose. There is some truth to the fact that if you put a sign in your yard right now, you will get some buyer interest. Now, unless your house is you know, a disaster. Right. If you've got a decent or better house in a decent or better area, which most people qualify for, and you put a sign in your yard, you're going to get phone calls right now. You might get calls from a buyer themselves. You might get calls from an agent. That does not mean you're going to get top dollar. That does not mean you're ever, ever going to make it to closing and funding and actually sell your home. You might get offers. You probably will get offers. You might even be able to sign off and execute what we call execute a contract or finalize a contract. The challenge for most people in this market is that during that process of negotiating, they feel like they got a really big number. They got a number that they're happy with, but they didn't get the number that they could have gotten, they could have received, had they been working with a world-class professional. Well, and they don't even know where to begin with right. on what what do we even ask for our home? Like right. they don't have the access to be able to go and but find But they all think that. they do, sure. right? So they're online on realtor.com or Zillow or a local real estate agent's website, or they might have even had an agent run. And I'm going to say the evil word, the word I hate above almost all other words that I hate. Voldemort? Comps. Oh, comps. Comps. Um, they pro they might have even had someone run them comps, right? So comparables, a competitive market analysis, a comparative market analysis, which is all about as valuable. And I'm not going to say what I was just going to say. I was going to was going to say something inappropriate, maybe about the value of low quality toilet paper. Yeah! But uh, comps are usually a disaster. Comps are usually a a an insult to the client, right? Um, it's, but everybody does that, though. Everyone does it. So what, how can it be an insult? Ninety nine and a half percent of the industry has been trained by their broker that that's what you do. You say, "Hey, Ian, you want to sell your house? I'm going to go find out what three or four of your neighbors did, and then they are in control of what you do. Whatever they did is going to dictate what you do. So it doesn't really matter if they were in a divorce or lost their job or won the lottery. Their motivation as to why they priced their home the way they did is irrelevant." Whatever they did is going to tell us what you have to do. That's the normal approach to comps, CMA, okay? Now, that is a relevant piece of pricing and marketing a home, but it is totally, utterly, completely inadequate, and in my opinion, manipulative, not always deliberately, by the way, manipulative to the client if that is the only thing you do to price a home for market. So why not just take those comps and then add like 20 grand to it and then list it? Well, that is a strategy that some may employ and that's better than the other one in the current market, but still it's a shot in the dark. It's a gamble. It's, it's, it's a hope and a prayer as opposed to a plan, right? I'm all for praying and hoping and, and optimism, but let's start with a plan and let's not, let's have a plan beyond choosing a number. Let's select a strategic number and then create marketing, create momentum, create demand, create competition. And then let's have systems on how to manage the competition, the demand, the urgency, the scarcity, the complexity of a marketing arrangement that we've put together. So, you know, we don't have time for me to go through all of what we would do there. But what I'm talking about is what most sellers are not doing. What they're doing is they're getting comps. They're, they're saying, hey, the three neighbors sold for this. That's our number. Or maybe they're saying, yeah, add 10K to that number. Let's see what happens, mm -hmm. right? We are finding that like 80 plus percent, probably more of sellers are leaving thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on the table. And what I mean by that is they're selling their homes and they're happy about it, but they're selling for significantly less than they could have otherwise. And they're believing real estate agents who, again, are, are kind people, well-intentioned, but they are not experts. 
They are not world class at what they do. And so the agent is saying, well, it wouldn't appraise for more than that anyway. So we'll settle there. Right, because there's no strategies on how to get an, an appraisal to be increased. And you're right? saying that facetiously because every single day around here, our team members and our agents, because they have the resources and strategy and staff that we do, are not only marketing to a buyer and the buyer's agent, but marketing to the inspector, the appraiser, the surveyor, all these people who's neutral third party. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my air quotes here, whose neutral third party opinion is going to dictate what a seller gets or what a buyer pays or what's insurable or what's not. And through many strategies that we and, and a handful of other exceptional agents around the country use, we are almost always, if not always, able to get the value that would, the maximum value of the market, even if the appraisal doesn't hit it, we're able to get the buyer to pay the difference or make up the difference or find alternative routes. But more often than not, we're able to get the appraiser to meet the value that we need to because we're able to communicate the value better. And that's a strategy that a seller needs to slow down a little bit and allow a world-class expert to lead them and guide them through before you just jump out onto the market and get you know, mesmerized, excited, enticed by an offer that sounds great, but still isn't as good as it could have been. Yeah, I mean, it's where you, you have to take expertise and realize you really can't put a dollar amount on what expertise is, right? Yeah. You can go and try and do this all by yourself, do it alone. You can go buy, you know, pay for a cheap agent or, you know, some sort of discount yeah. person. But what's the level of expertise? Like, what are they going to bring yeah. to the table other than what they, what it was that they said I mean, when you met with them, yeah. which was probably not a whole lot? Well, let, let me answer the question you just asked, because I've, I've been that guy. For five years, we owned a franchise that was the franchise model was we charge a very low flat fee to sell your home. We basically charge everyone the same price and it's very low and it cannot go up or down. And that sounds really attractive on the surface until you realize what I realized, right? My intention has always been to deliver world-class value, to do more for the client than other agents were doing or were even trying to do. And so when I was younger and more naive, I started out by saying, well, we'll just charge less. And then I realized pretty quickly that by charging less, I had less resources to invest in education, expertise, staff, technology, systems. So I was inconsistent because I had to run around like a chicken with my head cut off because I couldn't hire staff. I wasn't able to travel and go to you know, seminars and learn from the best and hire experts and coaches and consultants and get the best technology and learn how to drive real value for the client. Plus, I wasn't able to do any marketing whatsoever beyond the standard MLS and stick a sign in the yard. I was well-intentioned. I was a good guy, but I was not world-class. I was not an expert. So I'm not making fun of or angry at all these people out there. I just know because I've been there that even with the best of intentions, that does not serve the client well. Well, and honestly, it's attractive for the seller, right? It's attractive yeah. for somebody to say, I mean, I can do this and this, I can deliver the same stuff as other people are gonna do, and I'm gonna do it for a way cheaper price. But you go look at our Google reviews, right? Sure. Just Google Todd Tremonti or Google Todd Tremonti Home Sign Team and look at the hundreds of people that say, even in the review, they'll say, I was a little skeptical up front because these guys weren't the cheapest or whatever, but I ended up walking away with 30,000 more, 40,000 more, 62,000 more, 19,000 more. And it that's that's where the difference is. Well, and it's where the seller needs to do that extra step of research to make sure, hey, is this person telling me the truth or do is there another option? So if you're thinking about selling a home or of course buying a home anytime this year or beyond, head over to overunderagent.com. That's overunderagent.com or save this phone number in your cell phone. Call or text anytime. 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008 or overunderagent.com. We'll be right back with more Texas real estate right now.